Hello and welcome to Grassroots Community Television special coverage of the 30th annual Food and Wine Classic right here in Aspen. My name is Oliver Sharp and we have an amazing show for you today. We're going to go to some parties, we're going to meet some celebrity chefs, and of course we're going to take you on a tour of the Grand Tasting Tent. Blue Blazers not required, but as always, highly recommended. Grab your glass, let's go taste some wine. Joined now by Aspen's own celebrity chef, Randy Placeris. Randy, how are you? I'm doing fantastic. First day of Aspen Food and Wine. It's the 30th anniversary of this event. What does it mean to you as a chef to have the industry come here to your own backyard? For me as a chef and, and moving here 12 years now, I think we've been in Aspen, and, and working throughout you know, Chicago, Hawaii, and doing some international stuff, having all these celebrity chefs and, and, and just coming here is, I can't even explain it. it it's you've got a special. You've got a long history here uh, at the Classic. Tell me about your involvement this year. Uh, my involvement this year, um, we're, we're with uh, Visit Mexico Tourism Board, who's been very dedicated to us. Uh, they come every year. They bring amazing chefs from different destinations. Uh, this year they brought uh, Corey from Puerto Vallarta and then Maya Riviera. Um, and then we're doing AT&T uh, major sponsor. Excellent. Well, we have right here one of the dishes you're serving. Tell me about this one. This, this is the one from uh, Maya. And it's a seared scallop with a pork casta con um, with a little bit of avocado, gazpacho with tomatillo. Excellent. I'm going to eat this. Randy, Randy, thanks so much for, uh, for joining us, and uh, have a great classic. Thanks, buddy. Cheers. What? Muy bueno. Yeah? Muy bueno. <laughs> All right, I'm joined now by Glenn Albright. Uh, Glenn, tell me what wine you're showcasing here in the tent. This is called L.A. Chetto. It's an Italian family that owns a winery in Baja, California. It's about two hours south of uh, San Diego. So the, the microclimate there mimics uh, Sonoma. You know, it's, it's got the harsh winds in the, in the morning off of the ocean. It's a, a very dry area. Uh, in the morning, everything is soaking wet with the dew. And then uh, by 11, 12 o'clock, it's all, you know, 90, 95 degrees. So it really toughens up the, the vines. The, the family's been producing wine there since 1928. It's still family owned. Uh, considered one of the important wineries of the world today. Uh, they export to 27 different countries. The uh, wine that they're most known for is this. It's a Nebbiolo grape, which is generally only grown in Piedmont. And the Italian uh, own that, that grape varietal. They use it for Barolo. It's, it's one of their prize grapes. This year, in a blind taste test, this Nebbiolo won the gold medal in Vin Italy. So really fantastic kudos after 80 years of making wine, they, they've been recognized. We just came back from the Wine Spectator in uh, Las Vegas, and this winery was included in the Grand Tasting Tour as one of the top 100 wineries of the world. So we're really proud of it. The taste is amazing. A lot of the top chefs that are here all use it in their restaurant. Jose Anders, Ricky Velas, you know, you, you go down the list, and it's kind of great that people are recognizing wine from a country that you know people thought you couldn't drink the water and 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 i'm probably the biggest proponent of it i'm out there at, at all the events and telling people have you ever tried a wine from baja yeah. and they think you know wow this is spectacular wine it's it's i think it's the next argentina or it's the next you know new world of new worlds of wines excellent i'm going to give it a chance uh mexico not one of the really foremost winemaking regions in the world maybe we're seeing that change with this wine right here cheers Really good. All right, it's not all about wine here at the Food and Wine Classic. There are also some uh, distillery companies here. Philadelphia Distilling, one of those. Andrew Wirtz is here. How are you today? Good, very well. Thank you. Uh, tell me a little bit about what we're going to taste here today. Well, this is a corn whiskey. So it's essentially a moonshine, but it's a legal moonshine. We use three different types of corn. Um, each are blended together after three distillations. The three X's, three times distilled. Really smooth, 88.8 .8 proof. So it's got some kick works great as a, like a base in a lot of cocktails and uh, you know really fun it's kind of like old school meets new school you know and uh, a little badass for us but uh, it's a lot of fun. Tell me about the resurgence of moonshine or unaged whiskey that we've been seeing in the last couple years. You know there, the white whiskey category really didn't exist up until a couple years ago when craft distillers like us that really have cash flow issues and essentially want to put product out there as fast as possible 
And, it, and we realized, and a lot of us said, that consumers were up for it. You know, we have Blanco tequila, we have white rum, why not white whiskey? Um, so it's, for us, it's historically relevant to America and the growth of distilled spirits, which is part of Philadelphia distilling sort of mantra. Um, and you know, we're finding a young consumer that finds it really easy to mix, much more interesting than vodka in a lot of ways. Um, corn, sweet notes, it's fun. Are we going to see some of this in a few years that has seen oak? Are you guys going to release it as a whiskey? Yeah, we are working on aged spirits. Robert created this spirit specifically to be drunk now. Um, you know, you, you certainly, if you're going to make a whiskey, you leave different congeners in the spirit that you know it's going to hit the wood. This, knowing that we're going to drink it, he sort of created it for now. So, um, we'll have a slight variation. Let's give it a shot. Right. So we're going to just try it over some ice at first. Give it a try. It's great. It's very interesting. Nice and warm on the way down, too. It's clean finish. Again, easy to mix. Um, most people love the corn notes. We use heirloom corn so that we get lots of rich, uh, sweet notes from it. Thank you so much. Enjoy your classic. Thanks. Joined now by Chef Mark Murphy. Mark, uh, welcome back to the tent. It's the 30th annual Food & Wine Classic. Uh, what does this milestone mean to you and the other chefs that are here? Well, I mean, it just means that, you know, our industry has just gotten so much bigger. There's so much more awareness about what we do, and it's, uh, people are eating a lot better nowadays. 30 years ago and today, you can probably take the menus from back then and see the difference. I'm sure it's a huge difference. And it's just people love flavors now. I think that a lot of, there's a lot of reasons for that. And I think people are cooking a lot more at home, and people just understand food better, which I love. As a New York-based guy, how fun is it for you to get to come out to Aspen and hang with your friends for the weekend? Well, it's great to hang with all our friends. I mean, we all see each other at some of these festivals, but this fresh air poisoning out here, it's, it's really hard to take, and, but I'm getting used to it. All right, and you're here with All Clad. Uh, what do you guys have going on this weekend? Well, today, you know, we've been working with All Clad. This is the second year in a row I've been working with All Clad. And I love, first of all, I love the product. I use it in all my restaurants. So that, that's one of the reasons I like to do work with them um, and the other thing is, is we, we're using their, their their bowls and their all their equipment today to uh, make a little dish we're doing a little Moroccan couscous with a uh, merguez and uh, pepper and onions um, ragu it's what, would, it's, what should people pair this with when they head out and grab a glass of wine I would say this I mean you can go with a pretty heavy red I think it works well but you know if, if summertime you could actually go with a with maybe a white with some some backbone you know not not, not those flimsy white wines there's an awful lot to choose from here. You will not have a fun, you won't have a chance, you know, you can, you can be out there for a while. You can try a lot of wines, and you come back and tell me which one goes best. <laughs> Thank you, Chef. You're very welcome. I'm joined by legendary Chef Nobu oh. Masuhisa. Uh, chef, how are you today? Great, thank you. Thank you. This is the 30th anniversary of the Food & Wine Classic in Aspen. Uh, you've been involved for a very long time. Uh, how long have you been coming to the event? Well, the first, uh, I was at the Food & Wines 1988. So Food & Wine pick up me like at the top 10 chef. So maybe second or the third years. So I was, the first time I came here the 25 years ago. How fun is it for you as a restaurant owner all over the world uh, to come here to Aspen where you have a restaurant and have the entire food and wine industry come to your backyard and, uh, and hang out with you for the weekend? You know, the specialty of this, the food and wine in Aspen, is uh, bigger and bigger. And uh, so once a year, I come here and uh, we see a lot of the uh, French chef. So, you know, a lot of people just see them one time here. It's very, very exciting. It's a very nice place. I love to hear come. All right. Thank you, chef. Right, have thank fun. You. Thank you so much. All right, we're headed down under to the magical world of Penfolds. I'm here with Kurt. Uh, Kurt, how are you today? Good, how are you doing? Doing well, thank you. Uh, tell me what you're showcasing here. Uh, today we're pouring a uh, Shiraz from the Adelaide Hills and two different Shirazes, a Bin 128 and a Bin 28. Excellent, let's try the 128. Uh, and tell me a little bit about this, uh, this wine. So um, what kind of makes this wine unique is that this is all sourced from an area called Kunawara, which is known for the Terra Rosa, or the red soil. So 100% Shiraz, he's about a year in, uh, in, in American oak, French oak actually. All right, let's give it a shot. It's nice, as a, as a non-professional, maybe a professional could tell me what I should be finding on my palate here. So you should find that, you know, Shiraz is all about that kind of black, luscious fruit. So you might find some black currant, some blackberry, possibly some raspberry, and a real nice vanilla spice from the oak as well. 
That's exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> but, but cheers. Thanks, Kurt. All right. Obviously, there's tons of food, tons of wine in the tent. Of course, with that wine, you have to find some good meat to go with it. How are you today? It's all about beef today in Aspen. <laughs> it's a great day. And uh, what are we serving over we're here? It looks delicious. We're serving our mesquite smoked pepper beef tenderloin. And we're Perini Ranch Steakhouse from Buffalo Gap, Texas. I like it. You made the trip all the way up from Texas. Are you having fun here in Aspen? It's our 10th year in Aspen, and we wouldn't be anyplace else on the third weekend in June. It's great. Well, the beef is delicious. What are you recommending people pair with this uh, here at the tent? Well, of course, a Texas wine. Next door to us, we have terrific Becker Vineyards Texas Cabernet Sauvignon, which is an amazing pairing. And Maytag Blue Cheese just down the hall is a perfect thing to share with the beef. So come out and try the beef. All right, thank you so much. Texas Beef, well represented here at the 30th Annual Food and Wine Classic. Thank you so much. Thank you. Joined now by Chef Michael Simon. Uh, Chef, happy 30th Annual Food and Wine Classic in Aspen. Are you having fun so far? Unbelievable. I just, just landed, came right here, having a blast already. Tell me how cool it is to get to come to Aspen for the weekend, hang out with your chef friends, and have the whole food and wine industry right here uh, in a, a beautiful mountain town. Oh, it's unbelievable. It's, it's the greatest food and wine event that there is, it was, it's the original, it's still my favorite, and, and to be in Aspen for a couple days is a magical weekend. Excellent, we're gonna try some Nog Creek Rye here in just one second. I do wanna ask you though, uh, this is a long weekend, I know you guys do get out and have some fun, you enjoy your, some Nog Creek. Do you have a, uh, a, a celebrity chef hangover cure that you can share with us for people uh, maybe on Sunday morning when they wake up? What should they do to, to get rid of that, that awful feeling? Well, you know, I, I uh, I'm not afraid to go to the dark side a little bit, so I would just make a Bloody Mary, but I would use the Knob Creek rye and just kind of float into the rest of the day that way. The hair of the dog, and luckily there's a lot of hair there of the dog nothing around. nothing wrong with the hair of the dog on, on Sunday at the Classic. You, that's what you need to do. All right, great. Let's go ahead and try what we have here. We have a little Knob Creek rye. It is incredibly smooth with sweet tea and lemon. It is a super refreshing way to start your day. Also, it would be a good hangover cure. <laughs> Breakfast of champions. Breakfast here. of champions. Cheers. Cheers that's delicious. Very refreshing. It's great smooth. for summertime. Right. Absolutely. Great summertime drink. All right, Chef. Enjoy your summer Be good. Weekend. Stay well. Of course, the Grand Tasting Tents are always a highlight of the Food and Wine Classic in Aspen, but there are also tons of great parties and events all around town. Grassroots Community Television was there for all the hot parties, and we caught up with some of the biggest names in the industry. I'm so excited to be joined by my good friend Dana Cowan, Editor-in-Chief Food and Wine Magazine. Dana, how are you? I am Excellent. And it's finally here. We've been waiting for it probably since Food & Wine last, ended last year. Happy 30th. Uh, can you believe you've been doing this this long? I know. It actually feels so alive and so young. It's almost like one of those squiggly excited babies more than a, a mature 30-year-old. And We're so excited to have you back here in Aspen. Uh, what has it meant for you guys to be here and have this event running so long in a town like Aspen? I think Aspen has been the best place to have this event because the locals embrace it. It exemplifies the lifestyle that we write about in the magazine and that we bring to life in the tents and with the chefs and the, with the winemakers. So uh, it's also beautiful. So the weather's holding today. So um, I don't think we could do this sort of pristine, fantastic event anywhere else. I have goat cheese, I have uh, broby, I have uh, cow, I have red wine. I have baguette. I'm in heaven. It's everything that you could possibly need. That's it. And the whole wedding for me outside to eat that cheese. And tell me about uh, uh, the 30th anniversary of the Food & Wine Classic. What does it mean for you to have this classic here in Aspen? It means that I've done it 28 years out of 30. And it's just amazing. Except that 28 years ago I used to walk up the mountain. And now I don't anymore. But I still drink wine, eat cheese, meet my friend, have a great time. That's what the whole thing is about, you know, sharing sharing food, sharing memory, you know, uh, having a good time. How nice is it to see your industry uh, over those last 28 years really blossom into a huge industry, celebrity chefs? Uh, did you ever think that a chef would actually be a, a huge celebrity? Are you kidding. I mean, uh, you know, when I came to America, that was 50 years ago, there was only one salad in the supermarket called Iceberg. You know, there was uh, no leak, no shallot, and any good mother would have wanted her child to marry the a lawyer or a doctor, certainly not a cook. <laughs> now we are genius. I don't know what happened. You know, so. 
All right, well, thank you so much. Enjoy your weekend. Thanks. All right, always so much great nightlife all around town during the Food and Wine Classic in Aspen. Right now, I am back in the tent. I'm joined by Randy, the head winemaker for Kendall Jackson. Time to taste some more wine. Randy, how are you? I'm great. How are you doing today? Doing very well, thank you. I understand you've been coming to this event for quite some time. Oh, for sure. Myself, at least 10 years, and as a company, probably 15 years or more. We love this event. It's the best event in all of America. Do you, do you know why? I would love you to tell me why. Well, you have the best consumers in America here, the best chefs, the best wineries, a slew of great winemakers, and then also from a, from a promotional aspect, you have all the buyers from every, every group across America and a bunch of the distributors all in this one little town, like a collective audience, captive audience, and it's a blast. It's the perfect storm for the food and wine industry. Uh, what are we going to try here today? Well, this is our Kendall Jackson Grand Reserve Cabernet from Sonoma County, all mountain-grown fruit from our own vineyards. And these mountains overlook the Alexander Valley and Knights Valley. And you can tell just by looking at the color, the intensity and the darkness, that it's a power cab. And what are we going to find on the palate? Well, well, on the palate, you're going to have a great lush, lush palate, richness, nice tannins, kind of some focal focused tannins and then the broad, rich, shoulder-type tannins that you get from Knights Valley. Very unctuous and mouth-filling and voluptuous. It is very voluptuous. I like that one. I'm going to use that from now on. Randy, thank you so much. Well, thank you. Enjoy the day. Cheers. Thanks, Chris. I'm with Chris Hall, the owner of Long Meadow Ranch uh, Winery, and we are drinking wine on tap. Uh, tell me what I have here. You've got our 2011 Long Meadow Ranch Sauvignon Blanc obviously on, on tap, Napa Valley. This is something that I haven't seen uh, anywhere else in the classic, in the grand tasting. Uh, how did you come up with this? Tell me a little bit about how this came about and why we don't see it more often. Wine on tap's a, a great new thing, especially for by the glass programs at restaurants. So we came up with the idea of, of putting wines in kegs for, for particularly that reason. Every customer who comes to you know, a restaurant gets a fresh glass. That's really what this is all about, is getting the best, you know, freshest glass of wine uh, in your hand. Do you think this is something we're going to start to see more of? As a, is it going to gain popularity? Absolutely. In California, it's actually pretty common. In San Francisco, for example, you wouldn't open a new restaurant without at least a couple of wines on tap. So, you know, for example, here in, in, uh, in Aspen, uh, Steakhouse 316 is serving this. Uh, we also make a Cabernet, so featured both of those. It's pretty great. Thanks, Chris. Wine on tap. You can find it right here in Aspen, and I assure you, it's delicious. That's going to do it for the 30th annual Food & Wine Classic here in Aspen. Thank you so much to our wonderful host, Food & Wine Magazine, for another great event. Thank you for watching and drinking with us today. You can find this program and so much other great programming on grassrootstv.org. Have a great day.